Hi. I'm Sebastian Copeland, and I would like to take you on a journey. The Inuit first set foot on Greenland four to 5,000 years ago and make up 90% of its population. Inuit have had to adjust to lightning fast transformations, going from the Ice Age to the Space Age in less than 50 years. According to the UN's Human Rights Council, their traditional livelihood, culture, and rights are being threatened by outside influence and Western industry, whether in mining, commerce, or infrastructure. In this episode, I will discuss the growing imperative for companies' social responsibility and find out more about Audi's methods to verify and implement human rights within its supply chain. Come with me, let's get informed. This is where the aluminium parts are cut into small pieces. How does um, this issue of human rights fit into the circular economy? Now you see, there will be excess parts, and the excess parts, they can be recycled. And that's the way we reduce also the use of raw materials. And end of the day, the circular economy helps us to reduce risks also on a human rights aspect. Daniel, um, what does a human rights officer have to do with automotive? We are a globally acting company and we have to monitor our risks in that complex system. We're producing in China, Mexico and Hungary, for example, and of course in Germany, with 14,000 suppliers around the world. And we have to take responsibility in order to ensure that the risks are mitigated or avoided. What type of risks are we talking about? For example, child labor, equality in employment, so like fair wages, but it's also safety in the workplace, and it expands to environmental aspects as long as they have an impact on human rights. But it must be quite complex. We have to understand also cultural differences, but we have to insist on our principles. And working with suppliers means that we have to set expectations. Could you expand a little bit on that? One of my first goals was to set up a human rights strategy to explain also to our stakeholders our expectations internally and externally and to set up a real good management systems in order to focus on human rights. Now Daniel, you, you wanted to meet here. I'm assuming this is not your office or is it? No, this is of course not my office, but I thought it would be good to understand the process the value chain, right, from the raw material to the production and then into the final setup of a car. Now, I'm curious, what does aluminium have to do with human rights? Right down here, we can see aluminium coils. Audi is part of the aluminium stewardship initiative. The initiative is taking care that we set up global standards on sustainable performance. And it's about the chain of custody a chain of custody to ensure that one part to the other has the same standards. Now, I'll ask you a personal question on the topic. Do you think that this has a trickle-down effect in communities or in societies? I think all the efforts we are doing and other companies are doing as well will help us to raise the system as such and to raise the awareness and the respect for human rights. Yeah, that's interesting, right? Because you're dealing on the one hand with, uh, you know, optimizing the bottom line, and on the other hand, there is a moral responsibility there. I think there is indeed a corporate uh, moral responsibility, but also every employee has to have that moral consciousness to understand when it's the right time to address topics. You know, I'd like to talk about the cultural gap that may exist. How does a company like Audi bridge these cultural differences? The first start point for me is to set the value points. Once we have set that, we can explain our expectations to our shareholders. But it starts to having a proper sound strategy and then explaining that through the supply chain to our suppliers, to our partners. We have to get into the dialogue to speak to the people. That's what I actually do when I 
go visiting our uh, premises around the world, getting into the dialogue, understanding where those cultures come from, and that's important. I think once you are aware of a risk or a violation, then to address it and to use our whistleblower system, for example, or the supply chain grievance mechanism. And do you have uh, enforcement mechanisms? The code of conduct for all our employees, but also the code of conduct for our business partners. Through the code of conduct, expectations towards our suppliers is codified. We do uh, on-site checks to understand what processes are in place in order to fulfill our expectations. Daniel, if you were to sum up what you do at Audi and how you see your work, how would you do that? We respect different cultures, we respect our partners, we respect human rights, and we have to make sure that that seamlessly integrates.